Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Look what we have here. A customer has brought us their Gottlieb Big Shot pinball machine. He said he loves this thing and it hasn't been working for a little while. He said it worked up till recently and then it stopped. And he said he misses it, so he wants us to hurry up and get it fixed. <laughs> Last we spoke to him, that's what he said. So we're going to get it fixed. Now, he told us he's not all that concerned uh, about the cosmetics. He just wants it to play well. So we're going to make it play well because that's what we do the best. Now, the cosmetics, we can do a little bit of that too, but we're not great at those. But we can definitely make it play well. The first thing I noticed just looking at it, three things jump out at me. Okay. The first thing I noticed is the legs are on backwards. They're, it's not right. Like These ones are up a little bit. And those ones are flat. Now, I've heard some people say that they used to do that back in the day so they could cheat on the game. But it seems like it wouldn't be fun at all like that. The ball would roll so slow. I don't see how, I don't see how you could do that. And uh, there is a tilt bob in there. So if you, if you go too far, it's supposed to be like this. If you go too far like this, the tilt bob tilts and the game will tilt and things. So he said it was working fine and then it stopped working. I'm that's severe enough that it could just be tilted or something. But we'll we'll figure it out, people. We're gonna figure it all out. We're gonna make it where it's reliable for them. Got the cool, got the chrome coin door there. A little bit of scratching on this side. No dirty words though, so that's good. Um, so that's the first thing that jumps out at me is that it's, it's flat, flat footed. Someone has put a big old nice extension cord on there. Good for me. Um, and then the back glass is the second thing I notice. It's pretty rough. It could be better, but you know, what can you do? It has the cool art on it. The cool art, people. 1973, it says. 1973. Look at these people. So this girl here. <laughs> I think she's drunk. That's, that's my opinion. Look, I don't know. I don't know that girl. She looks drunk to me. This guy's also partaking, but it's not fear. All right, and then this dude. Has leprosy. And he's got horrible. Horrible stick placement on that cue ball. Look at this. This is how you end up with with divots cut out of your pool table felt. You can see it over here. Look at this. Look how he scarred up the whole pool table. Look at this. Got to get this guy away from this pool table. I guess once you've got one cut in the felt, though, it's pretty much over. So if he makes three more, it doesn't really matter. Um, freaking great art, though. Look how nice that's done. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, and then the third thing that I notice. Drop target heaven, baby. Look at that. Look at it. Just soak it all in. 14 freaking drop targets. Wow. I don't know if I've ever played a pool game, a pinball pool game, that I didn't like. They're always cool. Um, they're all fun. It's just, it works great because of the, the numbers, you know, you can, the counting. <laughs> the pool table games are always good, and most of the card theme games are always good. Poker and all that crap blackjack um, but everybody loves a good pool game so 14 freaking drop targets that's gonna be awesome 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 so the the layout you've got uh, two in lanes two out lanes and two kickers obviously and then you have the the uh, lane that can save the ball over here it looks like when you land here in the middle it says 500 points and opens the gate and that's how you get your eight ball the other ones are lit up as you hit the drop targets, I'm sure. Simple enough, but fun, right? And then...
looks like you can also get, or I guess it lights up the eight ball up there. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can get the eight ball up there as well. So it's just a drop target game, which cool with me. I'll bet it's fun as hell. We're about to find out. <laughs> All right. There's also like a pretty bad flake there. Oh, I thought that was chipped. It's not. Look how that flexes. Almost looks like it's plexiglass, but it's flaked so much it's got to be glass. Okay, so we're going to run through it and fix this sucker. We're going to fix it so it doesn't have any more problems. But I'm not so sure that it's going to run with it flat like that. But we'll see. Okay, so let me slide it out from the wall. Let's, in, let's look in the back, and then we'll look under the play field too. Just see what, what kind of shape it is here at the beginning. All right, here's the back. So the back door is a little bit too short, so I think maybe they've swapped it with the, another one. And they've got it bolted on a little different than usual. But hey, that works. I'm just pointing out things that are slightly different, people. We're not criticizing. Uh, it's only a two-player game, which means there's only eight score reels. So that's kind of cool. Less score reels to clean. <clears throat> and there's a uh, player unit here in the back. Um, that's not too big of a deal. Got some switches there that have to close and open at the right time. All right, so whenever it comes time, we'll fix all that. And then here is the, I think they call this the coin unit on the Gottlobs, I believe. Um, some call it the coin unit, the credit unit, and the replay unit. But you see there's a couple switches here that are disconnected. So what they've done is they've taken away the thing's ability to subtract credits. So once it has credits on it, it can't take one away. So it'll never go to zero uh, because they've disconnected that coil. Very, very smart. Um, I don't even know where it would have been. Maybe up here. Right. So they've modified it slightly so that it can't ever go back to zero. Okay, and then we've got a few relays. And that's it. So there's not a ton in the back box. It'll be a little quicker to work through. So uh, let's take the glass out of it and see what it looks like underneath the play field. So here we are. Now, it has the manuals and the schematics, which helps us a bunch, right? And you might be wondering, where do you get the manual and the schematics? Well, for the Gottlieb stuff, here's where you get it. The Pinball Resource. Great American company. Now, the Gottlieb copyright is kind of um, enforced still. The people that own that are very proud of it, as they should be. <laughs> so you can't find those floating around the Internet that easily. You're, you kind of need to buy them. So if you want to buy them, buy them from that company there. They uh, work with the Gottlieb people to make reproductions of parts and all kinds of stuff to keep these things running. Thankfully. So that's a great company, the Pinball Resource. They rock. They rock. I don't know how to say Pukipski, though. I think it's Pukipski, New York, but I don't know for sure. That's what I would guess. I would guess Pukipski, but I don't know. Okay. Um, big old relay bank here in the front. You can see the little legend down there under it that shows what it kind of, what each relay does. Score motor there, and then uh, several relays. Okay, and then on the play field, it's actually kind of got a lot going on because it's got all of those drop targets, right? So it, it has to do some math. <laughs> so two drop target banks of seven each, and they're, so, they're so big that there's actually a coil on each side so that whenever it resets, it can reset all seven of those things. If they just had one coil, uh, it might not have the strength. Might need some more strength. And then, people, some of you, this is going to be music to your ears. Some of you are going to hate this. And then I'm going to give you my opinion. 
They LED'd it. It's leaded out. There's LEDs all in this EM. Look at this. There's LEDs in it. Oh, man. Now, I personally am not really a big fan of the LEDs, but a lot of people are, right? And it doesn't bother me because they're not ruining anything. I mean, this machine, when someone gets it that has some sense, they'll take them all out. <laughs> They can take them all out and put the real light bulbs in it. But I am not one to tell a customer he's doing it wrong. If that's what he wants in his machine, then damn it, I will fight for his right to LED. Right? If they want LEDs in them, put them in there, brother. More power to you. Um, so this one has LEDs all through it, which means I don't have to replace all the light bulbs because they've already been replaced. Um, the flippers... Eh, it's kind of how they look, right? The, really, the only wear on these old ones that that you see is right there. See how that can move a little bit? But that's just a little bit of wear. That's not really all that bad. It's not tight when it's new. There's a little wear in them when they're new. That one's about the same. Not the end of the world. They're definitely not falling apart. You do sometimes get where the coil stop is messed up pretty bad inside there, but we'll see how they play first. Um, looks like there's grease on it. That ain't, that ain't really a good thing. But, like I said, we'll see how they, pl they play first. Everything looks pretty good, though. There's nothing, like, majorly hacked up that I can see or... Uh, missing a major part or anything like that. And the customer said that it was playing fine and then it just stopped kind of working one day. Um, so I think what we'll do in honor of that is we'll lay the play field down and we'll just try to start it and see what happens. See if that's what, what, what our experience is. But I'm going to go through and clean everything um, and give them the full service, you know. Um, but it, we'll just check and make sure that it's nothing glaringly obvious, like, you know, the score motor's not turning or something like that. Um, and uh, his tilt thing that I was talking about, how it being flat, it might tilt too easy. He removed the tilt. Uh-huh, he's cheating. So we're going to have to get in touch with this guy and see if he wants it like that or if he would prefer us to set it up where it uh, it's a little more how it's supposed to be. Because in, in my opinion... It, if it's got a little bit of slope on it, it's going to play better. It's more fun. Um, the, the problem with making them flat, yeah, it makes the ball roll slower towards you so you can be more accurate and all that, but what happens is it makes it more floaty. The ball will go left and right a lot easier. So they're not really designed like that. They're designed to have a little more slant on them than this one's got at the moment um, so that it just changes the trajectory of everything. So... That's my opinion, but again, that's one of those things, they're not ruining the machine or anything. Like, if you have a completely different opinion, you can adjust the leg levelers. It's not that big of a deal. You know, like, if you want it flat, you can adjust it like that. If you want these way up in the air, you can adjust it like that. Uh, same thing with the, the LEDs. If you don't like the LEDs, you can take them out and put regular ones in it. If you don't like the regular ones, you can take it out and put LEDs in it. So, all right, so let's put the play field down, and then let's see what she does in its current condition. I like to open them up before I do that though just to make sure nothing's, you know, there might be a screwdriver laying on the switches and burn something up whenever it starts, but everything looks cool. I have plugged this up. The power appears to be going inside of the cabinet. We ain't got nothing yet. Let's see if this one is new enough to even have a power switch. Yes. Well, all things considered, the back glass doesn't light up that bad because the, uh, since the, so much paint is gone, it kind of almost looks like it's made like that. <laughs> okay. So the hum you're hearing is because of this little coil here. This is the coin door lockout coil. When the game is off, they probably replaced it. It's got a new one. They probably replaced it because it was making so much noise. You can just unplug it, though, if it's making too much noise for you. But here's what it does. This is the only purpose of it, okay? When you turn the game off, that coil releases because there's no power on it, right? 
Well, what that does is it moves a couple little, the coin mechs are missing, but it moves a couple little wires that move into the coin mech and make it where if a quarter falls through, it hits that wire and goes back out the front. The whole purpose of that is so that whenever you walk up with the game off or in a state where it can't take a coin, like uh, while it's resetting or whatever, it may just do it whenever it's off, but um, the quarter will be returned to you. So the whole purpose of that circuit is so that it doesn't take your quarter. And everybody said that they were trying to rip you off. Look, they, they designed that whole circuit just so you uh, wouldn't lose your quarter. Come on, people. Come on now. That's nice of them. Okay, so there's no lights on the play field, but that may be because the game hasn't started yet. We're going to try to start it. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. So did you hear what it did? It went da 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 So what was that? That was it trying to reset all of the score reels, which were already reset. And then it went tack and went into game over mode. Okay, I'll bet if I do that again it does the same thing. Looks like it went to one player can play and then went back to it. Yeah. Okay, so it's immediately falling into game over mode. And uh, we never get any lights on the play field. And uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. So that's where we're starting with it. Okay, folks, so I have popped the play field out of it. We're going to get down to it. There it is. Look at it over there. It'll be back in here soon enough. And I have started going through cleaning the switches. Now, I'll show you what we're looking for whenever we do this. I use a little file um, that's not super aggressive, just a really mild file to clean off the contacts, right? And you want to go through and basically clean the surfaces of the contacts. Back in the day, whenever they weren't as old, they used like a little piece of a business card or something, but these things are filthy now. People, you're gonna have to do something else. Some people swear up and down by spraying uh, deoxit on it. I don't believe that works, <laughs> but, but some people swear it does. Um, uh, so I use a little light file, not a heavy file. You don't wanna see um, pieces of metal all over the bottom of the thing, uh, but you got to clean that stuff off. But uh, I'm running into some stuff. I'm running into some uh, obvious problems here. So I'm on the tilt hold relay right now. Okay. Now what do you see? By the way, I've got it unplugged so I can touch things without worrying about getting electrocuted. <laughs> so what do you see first? The coil's been replaced. Right? Now look down in there. See the metal, see the, the, the copper colored piece and then you see a little piece of metal sticking out from that. Now watch when this, so the way these work is that uh, turns into basically a magnet and it pulls this little bar down, right? The bar is attached to this plastic actuator which moves the switches, okay? But here's the problem. The thing doesn't fit in there right. Look how when it pulls it down, it can only pull it just a little bit. It looks like it's actually touching it right now, and it's just kind of wobbling on the top of it. Well, that ain't right. So because of that, the throw is all off. So look at that top switch up there. You'll see a short blade, a long blade, and then another short blade. Well, the long blade should be touching the short blade, and then when this pulls in, it should move over and touch the other short blade. Right? But look, it can't do it because the throw is so small, it's just barely moving. And then this one in the middle should open, but it can't because it can't move enough. And then this one on the bottom should close, and it might be working. Right? So th there's a definite problem with this brand new relay. It's not 
it's not the right one or it's not mounted right or something. So I'm going to take it out and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there was a little copper washer between the edge of the coil and the bracket there. And if you look at another one that hasn't been replaced, the coil is made just slightly different. So they put a little copper washer in there. The reason that they use copper a lot of the times is because it has something to do with it making it not buzz. So this is an original one. You see that little little bit of space between the end of the coil and the metal plate. That's because there's a little washer in there. So whenever they replace this one, they put that washer back in there. But it doesn't need it because the coil has a little built-in spacer made out of plastic on it. So you don't need that little washer. So I put it on the outside just to keep it so that we'd have it, right? Uh, but I took it out of the inside. So by doing that, it, it lowered this thing just a little bit to where it is now not touching the plate. And when the plate pulls in, or when the actuator pulls in, you now get enough travel that all of the switches work. So I looked at the hold coil. Um, it's the same way, so I'm going to mess with that. So the, uh, the reason these have been replaced is because the, uh, they stay on all the time, so they burn up a lot. So it's just kind of a common thing. Okay, so I'm going to put that back in, and then I'll look at the other one, and then I'll continue uh, cleaning through them. That could be our whole problem. So I worked through the rest of them. I didn't see anything super significant. Um, I just cleaned all of the contacts. And uh, none of the other coils had been replaced, so they didn't have that same problem, although it was uh, a problem on the uh, tilt hold relay and the hold relay. Now here in the bottom is another new coil, but you see it's made different. See how that thing is lower than those other ones we were just looking at? And then also on this side, this is completely flat. So if you put that little uh, washer in there, it would make it stick out just slightly from the side like the other ones. So it seems like this is the correct bobbin. Uh, for the coil that should be in there. Those are just made a little bit differently. But by removing that spacer, it moved it down, and they're doing their throw properly. Or seem to be. Okay. And so also there's this relay bank here. So there's all these little relays mounted on one big arm. So these can trip. They work the same way. The coil pulls in a plate. Makes this little arm move some levers. Okay, so that big loud clunk we're hearing is this resetting. So, what's going on is when you start the game, let's see here, when we're hitting start, um, we're sitting here with the game over relay tripped. Right, and maybe the last ball relay tripped. Um, okay, and then it's it's starting up the game. It's uh, tripping the start relay, uh, which is over there, I think, which trips the reset relays, and these make everything start going. Da -da 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 it's resetting all the score reels. Whenever it figures out it's back to zero, it resets all this, which resets the game over relay. But then the game over relay is tripping again. So that's why if you looked, you saw the game over light go out for just a second. That was the second between when it reset this and the thing tripped again. So I'm wondering if the hold relay had something to do with that. Maybe. Okay, so I'm going to put this back. The same thing. Cleaned all the switches. Everything looked cool. The uh, only thing of note is that there was like some oil on it. It almost looked like somebody had sprayed WD-40 on it or something. And you know how I hate WD-40. Man, I don't like WD-40. 
I hope it's not conductive, whatever they sprayed on here, because if it is, it makes if it makes two of these switches stick together, you can't like unstick them. They're stuck. They're stuck, people. It's liquid. If it's liquid, you can't unstick it. Okay, so I'm going to put that back, uh, and then we're going to try to start it again, see what happens. Okay, so I plugged it back in, turned the cabinet back on. We're in game over, and we also have the tilt light on. I believe that may be normal behavior. Or close to normal behavior. Right, so let's see if we can start it. I don't know if it'll start without the play field or not. We can figure it out with the schematics, but let's see. Same thing, except now we're permanently tilted. All right, well, it was a good try. Okay, so I'm going to slide the play field back in and see if we got anything going on there. I don't know why it would be tilted. Hmm. You can see, let me show you with this so you see what this does. It'll kind of illustrate it a little better. So the reset pulls in. Okay, so the reset control relay is pulled in, and then the 2000 bonus value relay, the 3000 bonus value relay, and it looked like the second player relay, and then it reset. Um, and whenever it reset, the game over relays immediately tripped trip again. So that's what we're looking at right now. Okay. I'm going to slide the play field back in. We'll see if we get anything different. So to put the play field back in, we have to plug these Jones plugs back in. But you can see they get kind of dirty and corroded. So I'm cleaning them up before I put them back in. So this side I've cleaned. This side I haven't. We've been using these little sanding rocks. These are for cleaning rust off of knives. They're like a little sponge. It's like an eraser, but a little more hefty a little more aggressive. Someone sent us those and they work great. They're Japanese sanding rocks <laughs> for um, for cleaning knives. We have some of these. We've got things, little things like this that we use in our videos listed on our website along with all the games we have for sale and stuff like that. So go check out lionsarcade.com and if you go to the parts page we have things like these little sanding rocks listed on there. They will take you to Amazon to buy them. They're pretty inexpensive. And if you buy anything on Amazon after you click one of our links, it gives us a tip. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. I was looking on there earlier. We did pretty good today. Somebody bought like 40 different things on there. So whoever that was, we really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to go put this, uh, I'm gonna go put this one back in. And then the other two bigger ones that go down to the bottom. And we'll see if we get anything different. Like, I'm thinking maybe the lights might work on the play field now. That'd be good. So I put it back in. And we have the tilt light on and the game over light on. Okay. Whenever you start it, it does the same thing. The lights never come on. So, you know what time it is. Schematic time. Now, we're about done with this video. But I'll give you one to chew on. Here are the schematics. Now the T relay is the tilt relay. See how someone has highlighted that. We are walking in the footsteps of another repairman. I believe it's the guy that owns it. So he's got the T relay highlighted because it says tilt. So he's thinking it's tilted. And then he's got the tilt switches highlighted. Right? But, let me show you this. Walk with me. T relay is this back one, and it is not held in. So the tilt relay is not on. Ooh. The tilt relay is not on, people. So why does it say tilt? Well, he or she was figuring that out. The tilt light they had highlighted, and it looks like. Um, the tilt light would be lit up if the H relay is normally closed. Now what does normally closed mean? See that little line? 
See that little switch with a line through it? So that means that's normally closed. So it's in its normal position, i.e. it's not pulled in. It's connected. So when that, switch, when that relay, H, is not pulled in, the tilt light comes on. Okay. So it just connects through a fuse to the transformer. And that's why that light is on. It's because the H relay is not pulled in. So what pulls in the H relay? Well, there it is. One side is connected to the transformer, and then the other side, it can be pulled in through all these different ways. See how there's a switch there that says H? So it can be pulled in. It can be held on by a switch on itself. Once it pulls in, that switch will be connected, and that will hold it in, right? It can also be held on through the A relay, through the left target. Wait a minute, am I looking at the right one? I'm looking at the wrong one. That's the M relay. It just looks like an H. Here we go. Yep. They had highlighted the H relay. They're on the trail, people. They're figuring it out. That H relay isn't coming in. That's why the tilt light is on. Here, let me show you the next part. I want to see some magic. So, if that's true, if I push in the H relay, very carefully with my fingers, <sighs> And the tilt light goes off. Uh-huh. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh-huh. All right, so I'm going to show you that little part of it, and then you can leave your comments down below what you think the problem is. The H relay is not pulling in. On this side, it should be in. The R relay is the reset relay. No, that's the hold relay. The R relay, the hold relay has to be pulled in or that relay will never come on. So is the R relay pulled in? The R relay is the other one that they replaced. It is held in. I wonder if there's a way I can break that open without getting electrocuted. Oh, I'm wrong, it is not held in. Well, that's our problem. Okay, so the R relay is not holding in, people. No wonder the H relay isn't holding in. The R relay is not holding in. Come on, people. Come on now. Back through the, the years we go. Where is the R relay? I'm looking. I'm looking. There it is. The R relay is if the light box tilt switch is normally connected, the R relay will come on through the uh, switch on itself and through the S switch. The S relay is the start relay and through the anti-cheat switch. So if all of our anti-cheat switches are closed, and the R relay is pushed in manually, manually like I just did, it should hold itself on if the light box tilt switch is not uh, tripped. Hmm. Light box tilt switch. Okay, is this switch behind this plate Is that connected? Try not to get electroshocked. Hell no, that ain't connected. Uh huh. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, uh, uh. All right, I'm gonna try bending that a little better, and then we'll see what we get. This looks like something my brother Donnie would figure out. If you don't know about my brother Donnie, he has a channel here on YouTube. The My Brother Donnie channel. Go check it out. The link is down below. We work on these old pinball machines, but he's very mechanically inclined. So he works on 
car, old cars, and lately we've been working on old buildings, doing construction. We're about to start working on an old mobile home. Uh, we're doing videos of. It's the type of stuff he can figure out really well. Uh, fix that part, right? So, we got to test it. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? We'll see you on the next video, folks.